What's up guys, my name is Technobber here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a continuation of yesterday's video which was setting up and using a VeraCrypt for your first time. So assuming that you have VeraCrypt installed and you're interested in making one of your existing crypts bigger, instead of making a completely new crypt moving everything across just to have more space in it, there are a couple of things that we can do to expand our existing crypt files so that we can add more files past its existing limit. There are in fact two things that we can do and I'll go ahead and open up VeraCrypt to show you. After VeraCrypt has loaded at the very top, I'll go to Tools, followed by Volume Expander. Then I'll go ahead and click Select File and I'll go ahead and select where the file is. For me, it's over here. So I'll select it, double click it and you'll see the name is put in here. Then we can go ahead and click Mount and we'll choose if it has a hidden volume or if it doesn't. This file over here doesn't have a hidden volume, so I'll click this button over here. Then I'll enter my password and hit OK. Next, you'll see this warning over here if it's got a fat file system saying it cannot expand the file system, but the volume itself will be expanded. So if it is a fat system, I'll hit yes and we'll go ahead and tell it to expand it as such. Then I'll go continue, move our mouse a bunch, and after that bar is nice and full, I'll hit continue. Once it's done, you'll see it mount again, unmount, and then it says it's successfully expanded. If we exit, exit once again, and we drag and drop the new 200 megabyte file onto VeraCrypt, and we choose to mount it somewhere, put in the password, we'll hit OK, open it up, and as you can see, even though the file is 200 megabytes, the actual disk itself is only 98. And unfortunately, there's no way of making this bigger if it was made as a fat file system. So the only way to do this is to go ahead and move the files out of this folder to somewhere else, or you can move it directly to a new VeraCrypt volume. So I'll go ahead and create one right now. And when we get to the screen over here, instead of choosing FAT, I'll choose NTFS. And this leads nicely into the next step. So if we go ahead and create the file here, we'll be able to expand it later using that exact same tool. However, we also have this dynamic checkbox over here that'll allow it to dynamically grow as more files are added. But we'll get into testing that in just a second. First of all, I'll create this file. And once we've made our NTFS volume, I'll go ahead and mount it as such. And you can see it's now over here, 135 out of 149. Let's go ahead and move the files across from my one crypt to the other without touching my main computer. Then we can go ahead, dismount our first one, which is the smaller one as such. And then we can go ahead and delete the original file. Heading back to VeraCrypt, we have our files inside of our new drive over here, and the drive size is about 149 megabytes, where already 15 of it is taken up just by the file system. So to expand it, first we need to dismount it, then we'll go to Tools, Volume Expander, Select File, Mount, does not contain a hidden volume, put in our password, then I'll go ahead and expand it to say 250 megabytes. We'll move our mouse nice and randomly as such, we'll go Continue, Exit, Exit once again, drag and drop it on, mount, put in the password, mount, and then you can see it is now 249 megabytes big compared to the previous 150. So now that you know how to successfully expand a drive, as long as it's NTFS, what exactly does a dynamic drive do? Well, I'll go ahead and dismount this one and I'll start by creating a new drive. So file, file container, standard, we'll select a file location, I'll name it test dynamic. Next, I'll leave it as AES. Next, then we'll input a maximum file size, 40 megabytes. Note that this is the maximum and it'll start from very low and fill all the way up to here. If you want to get higher than this, then you'll need to expand the drive later. Next, put in our password. Next, yes, we'll change it to NTFS. We'll move our mouse around a bunch and this time we'll check dynamic. Then I'll click yes once you've read through all of the warnings there and we'll click format. Once it's done, I'll hit OK, and you'll see this pop up over here. Note that the size of the dynamic container reported by Windows and by VeraCrypt will always be equal to its maximum size. To find out the current physical size of the container, right-click on the container file in Windows and select Properties and see Size on Disk Value. Also note that if you move it to another physical drive, it'll be extended to the maximum. You can prevent that by creating a new dynamic container in the destination location, mounting it, and then moving the files from the old one to the new one. So basically doing what we did here with a new volume. I'll drag and drop it onto the program. Then I'll click mount, I'll type in the password, hit OK. And then looking inside of the Windows File Explorer, you can see the disk is here, ready to have some files inside of it. 
So let's go ahead and see what they mean by dynamic. You can see the file is 40 megabytes, but if we right click, go to properties, and you can see that the size on disk is six megabytes. However, it says up here, size is 40, and this is the maximum. So of course, if you wanna make this file any bigger, you can use the expander. However, this physical file size here, even though it says the file is 40 megabytes, it's only actually taking up six. So it won't be able to go past 40, which is the maximum we set earlier, but it'll use way less than that until it actually gets here. But anyway, that's about it. My name's been Tech Number here for Troubleshoot. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.